defensive end throughout this series that has kept him engaged even when his shot hasn't been falling. The Rockets have tried to put him in screen and roll situations time and again, leaving him one-on-one -on -one against either James Harden or Chris Paul. It's not that Curry has shut down either Houston All-Star, but he hasn't been abused by them either. And his success at the defensive end provided at least some of the fuel for his explosive and slightly profane second half. He's pretty competitive, you guys know that. And when they pick on him every time, um, it fires him up, you know. So um, it's tiring. They're, they're smart to do it. You know, they're trying to wear him down. And they got great one-on-one -on -one players. But he's better than people think uh, defensively. And he's got quick hands. And he's capable of holding up. And even if they don't, um, even if they do score, uh, he's got the mental fortitude to just take it and keep playing. Even if they score some tough buckets and, or you get stops, you can push the transition um, and, and make them work on the other end. And I think just for the morale of everybody out there on the floor, it helps to know that there's no breakdowns and everybody's on a string and we're communicating and talking and playing physical and knowing that Houston's a high-octane high offense and they're going to they're gonna score, but uh, we got to be locked in. You guys, like when he drops an F-bomb on occasion, because it's so out of character for him. Fuck yeah. <laughs> But the Warriors' defense could be tested severely in Game 4. Andre Iguodala is currently listed as doubtful after he banged his left knee with James Harden in the second half of Game 3. And Iguodala is a key defensive member of the Hamptons 5 lineup that has Golden State's go-to in moments of trouble. All right, thanks, D.A. And Iguodala has started the last 12 straight playoff games. Guys, if Iguodala, in fact, cannot go, how do the Warriors feel his absence most? Well, I, I think losing him, you know, Steve Kerr has, you know, compared him to like the modern day version of, of Scotty Pippen. He does so many things for him in terms of defending the best player, also pushing the ball in transition, and can, you know, effectively uh, pass and, and be their point forward. You know, how they substitute for it, they got a multitude of ways. You know, just give it to Durant. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rockets down two games to one, and Mike D'Antoni saying on Monday that the Warriors have all the pressure to win game four. You buy it? No, I don't buy it, and he doesn't buy it either. I think for him is, um, obviously, I think he knows his team better than our, uh, us. I think he's trying to take some pressure off of them, but no. The pressure is on the Houston Rockets, and go back to Andre Iguodala. He's Mr. Intangible. You won't replace him with one guy, but I think the Livingston and also the Nick Young – Combined, you can give a performance like they can have with the Andre Iguodala. What do you think about Dan Tony's statement? Well, you know, I'm like Steve. We're not buying it. So let me talk about Iguodala. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, it, you know, nobody's buying Does it. Does that I win mean, points? No. In the, the locker room with your coach? I mean, what's... The, for, for Houston? Houston yeah. for, no, I don't think so. I just think he's trying to take some pressure off the situation, trying to light it up. Because he doesn't believe that himself, that it's yeah. all the pressure's on the Warriors. Not at all. Wow. And Steph's back, huh? So we'll see how that goes. It is a must-win game for the Rockets. Tonight. All right. Well, we'll check it out on TNT on Tuesday night. Of course, uh, TNT's coverage begins at, at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Guys, check this out. The last time the Warriors lost a home playoff game, home playoff game, got to go back to Game 7 of the 2016 NBA Finals, and they lost that epic series to LeBron, Kyrie, and the Cavs. We'll try and keep it going, make it 17 in a row on Tuesday night. So bring the defensive mindset right away. The question now is, can their game travel? Can the Rockets establish those trends on the road? The Warriors back to the style that has succeeded for the last four seasons. Here we go, right now, right now, right now. Harden guarding him. Harden trying to reach it. Curry step back, quick release. Three ball! have set an NBA record, making it 16 consecutive here at home. That's what you expect to do. Uh, Got to keep doing it now. All right, after having three days to get ready for Game 3, just one day to prepare for Tuesday's Game 4, where the Dubs look to take commanding three games to one series lead. You'll be watching the game on TNT. Of course, NBA TV begins your night. 
at 7 o'clock Eastern, then come back with us right after the game for extensive post-game coverage. Let's get more now from Oakland, where the questions about Curry appear to have been silenced. However, as David Aldridge reports, there is now cause for concern about Andre Iguodala's left knee. Steph Curry found his offensive rhythm in the second half of Game 3 Sunday, but it's been his play at the defensive end throughout this series that has kept him engaged even when his shot hasn't been falling. The Rockets have tried to put him in screen and roll situations time and again, leaving him one-on-one -on -one against either James Harden or Chris Paul. It's not that Curry has shut down either Houston All-Star, but he hasn't been abused by them either. And his success at the defensive end provided at least some of the fuel for his explosive and slightly profane second half. He's pretty competitive, you guys know that. And when they pick on him every time, um, it fires him up. You know, so um, it's tiring. They're they're smart to do it. You know, they're trying to wear him down, and he got great one-on-one -on -one players. But he's better than people think uh, defensively, and he's got quick hands, and he's capable of holding up. And even if they don't, uh, even if they do score, uh, he's got the mental fortitude to just take it and keep playing. So even if they score some tough buckets and, or you get stops, you can push in the transition uh, and make them work on the other end. I think just for the morale of everybody out there on the floor, it helps to know that there's no breakdowns and everybody's on a string and we're communicating and talking, playing physical and knowing that Houston's a high-octane high offense and they're going to they're gonna score, but uh, we got to be locked in. You guys like when he drops the half mile on occasion because it's so out of character for him? Fuck yeah. <laughs> But the Warriors' defense could be tested severely in Game 4. Andre Iguodala is currently listed as doubtful after he banged his left knee with James Harden in the second half of Game 3. And Iguodala is a key defensive member of the Hamptons' five lineup that has Golden State's go-to in moments of trouble. All right, thanks to David Aldridge. We'll see more of him on tomorrow night's TNT coverage. Back with Isaiah Thomas and Steve Smith. He is doubtful, Andre Iguodala is. What does it mean, though, if indeed he can't play or is limited in any sort of way? Well, it, it means that he gets some rest, <laughs> you know, on, on the real. Because when, when I look at, at, at Golden State, they, they have a lot of answers to all the questions that Houston are trying to pose. Now, you know, Andre gives them, you know, more answers, but just because he's not there, that doesn't, you know, uh, make their effectiveness you know, any less deficient. Now, you know, with him, you know, they're definitely more, but without him, they'll just, you know, plug somebody else in. You know, you got Durant who will still come in, and then Sean Livingston's like, you know, he's doing his thing right now, and he's moving pretty good. So he he presents another type of mismatch that, that Andre doesn't. Where do you think Steve Kerr goes if Andre Godala can't play or, or at least doesn't want to start him? Well, I think they'll probably go to, Kevon Looney. I think he's played extremely well. They'll take a little bit of pressure off uh, uh, Draymond. But then also, you know, with Steve Kerr, Isaiah said it best. Would you be surprised if they started Nick Young? Would you be surprised if they started Sean Livingston? Both those guys present something different than Iguodala. Iguodala's things are intangibles that you can't see on the box score. You're obviously a better team with, uh, with him. But if you can get more reps for Nick Young, he's capable of maybe getting 20. But I think also for them is they're just going to miss his leadership if it's a game where there's a little bit of adversity. He's calm in, in pretty much every situation. Well, Houston now down two games to one, and, and Mike D'Antoni stunned us a bit earlier today when he said that the Warriors now have all of the pressure to win game four. Buy it? No, I, I, I don't buy it. I mean, uh, you know, you, Houston's got to win this game. Because if Houston doesn't win this game, when you go down in the series and you're down 3-1, going back to your place, then psychologically all the demons really start to come out because you're asking yourself, do I want to go back to Golden State for a game five and take a spanking, right? You know, so half of your team, you run the risk of half of your team start planning to go on vacation. You know, this is a must-win game for Houston. And, and I'll, I'll circle back to, to Andre because I think we kind of downplayed his meaning a little bit because I heard Steve Kerr compare him at one time to Scottie Pippen defensively, which I kind of buy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I look in this era and I look at, at Andre, what he can do defensively is very similar to what Scottie was capable of doing. So I don't want to, you know, underestimate what he brought to the table. Well, Steve Kerr always references Andre Iguodala's basketball IQ and 
his brilliance off the court as well. One of the smarter guys he's ever coached or played with. But the fact that D'Antoni here, I mean, what, 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 what's the game here? of saying that the pressure's on the Warriors. You know, I'm with Isaiah. I don't buy it at all because this is a very important game for them. But I do think maybe he knows his team a little bit better than me. He's trying to take the pressure off them and maybe saying this is the Warriors. But in reality, he knows this is a game they must win to have a chance to win this series. I mean, you cannot go down 3-1 to the Warriors and they have a chance to come back and close it out, even if they lose the game right. in Houston. So I think it's for him, it's just trying to take some pressure off those guys. And with all the unknowns out there, we do know that the Warriors are capable of winning playoff games in Houston. They did it already. We saw that. Right? Absolutely. The, the biggest known in, in this series is Steph Curry was kind of contained. Now Steph Curry's out of the box. And when you look at the Chris Paul-Steph Curry matchup, right, uh, you know, Paul had him kind of contained a little bit. We were questioning if he was hurt, can he shoot, so forth and so on. Now Curry's out of the box. This game, it's important that Paul has got to come back and figure out a way to get Curry back in the box or contain him a little bit. Because if you let this fire keep raging, yep. you know, it's going to be like the volcanoes in Hawaii. Isaiah said something best. You said it, but it's really reality. You said he had a handoff and he's by the hash mark. Oh, my God. And he knocked that down. So for me as a player, <laughs> what does that mean? That means you might extend your defense out further because he had been missing threes. Yeah. Now to extend it out further, that gives him a better driving lane, but it also gives more space to everybody yeah. else. And that's when you start talking about that I mean, ball. look at this shot right that here. That ball gets to hopping around, Isaiah. And then, oh, maybe Clay gets hot. And then that's oh. when you have yeah. a big problem. Because I'm going to pencil in 25 for Durant. Sure. Well, well let's get into here um, what James Harden has struggled in every game outside of game one of the three series offensively struggle compared to his MVP-like numbers. What have the Warriors done to Harden uh, uh, when the Warriors are on offense to make Harden work, maybe to you know, make his life a little more miserable? I, I think they, they've done what they've always done to Harden. You know, they, they've always been able to isolate him, you know, and focus on him defensively. And they see him as expending so much, you know, energy on the offensive end that defensively, as you see, he, he really has nothing left to give. And they really try to isolate him, get him out front. And, you know, he's, he's not that great of a defender. And bringing Paul over, they thought that Paul would give them a little bit more defensive stamina, uh, a little bit more offensive stamina in games like this. But as you can see, you know, the Golden State strategy is similar to what Houston's strategy is. The two former MVP, the current MVP and the former MVP, you know, both teams, you know, coincidentally are saying, okay, we look at the current MVP and the former MVP, these two guys are very weak defensively. So Houston is going at Steph and Golden State is going at Harden. Now what Golden State has that Houston don't have, they got Clay and Durant, right? And what Paul was supposed to be for Houston uh, he wasn't there last night, Let's or the other night. Let's see if he can be that in this Game 4 situation. Isaiah, I'm going to ask you this mindset for Steph and also James Harden. If they keep running screen rolls to get you to switch, do you just start on them? Do you just say, I don't, because I don't know if I want to collect those guys versus me just saying, let me just start on him. And if they run a screen and roll, and then obviously we will switch again. But if I start on him, now I can play him better one-on-one -on -one versus trying to just collect yeah. him. Do you I do that? Yeah, and I think I think Steve Kerr and Steph in in the Warriors team earlier in the early in, in Game Three, you know they called the timeout because, you know Harden was kept going at Steph, and finally they said, hey, hey Steph, you got to take the challenge, take the challenge, and guard your man. See if you can guard him. At least when you guard him, right, it gives us all a chance to play. We don't have these crazy rotations right. that we're trying to adhere to. And if he scores on you, at least try to make it difficult. I thought when Steph stood up and took the challenge of trying to guard Harden in a couple of one-on-one -on -one situations, I think that inspired the rest of his team to step up and defend harder and play better. All right, that game at series resumes tomorrow night. We'll get you set more for the Eastern Conference Finals game four coming up in a bit here, right up here on Game Time. We come back and talk about the coaching carousel. Milwaukee has filled its vacancy with Mike Budenholzer. Match made in heaven, we'll discuss.